G'day YouTube mob. Just going to do a bit of a shed update I suppose. I haven't done a video for so long. I suppose I should uh, pull my finger out and do one, eh? Uh, we've got this project here on the go, which is a 93 KLR 250. It was... <laughs> I bought it from a mate who bought it from a mate who bought it from another mate. All my workmates and um, one of them said to me, don't you do a video on that bike because he was a bit worried about all the stuff that he'd done to it. I said, no, or I'm not going to do one. I won't um, dob you in. But it's been a bit of a long project to get it going. I paid 500 bucks for it, which is pretty cheap for a dirt bike. And it's got, really, it's like got new tyres, new chains and sprockets. They resprayed the tank. So it's going to be quite a good bush hack when I get it finished. Still got to do the front end. Got the fork sitting there to do. One of the stanchions was bent, but my well, I just whacked it in the press and made a couple of dies up and squashed it back straight, so I reckon that'll be all right too. But yeah, that's what's going on. Got uh, nothing much has changed. See our lathe sitting there and the mill. Got a new, made a new steel workbench. I don't know if you guys remember, there was a big, I made one out of um, 8B2 treated pine timber from Bunnings and I think when I bought it it must have been green because the whole thing twisted and warped and it yeah it just was horrible so I flicked that and I built a decent metal one it's a bit smaller and it gives me a bit more room just to sort of move around in here but the main the main focus for today is these new lights that I got these are 90 watt LEDs and these ones seem to me to be pretty good they run really nice and cool so it'll be interesting to see how long they last. But what I'm going to do, I just want to pull one apart and see what the voltage on the LEDs across each LED is. Well, yeah, the voltage, but mainly the current. These ones here, oh, these ones are only about 70 bucks each too, but they're so hard. Actually, hang on, where's the box? I'll grab the box. Right, this is not a plug for stinking Bunnings either. I'm just, you know, talking about this product yeah so 90 watts seven and a half thousand lumens and they're good they're bright but it's always some of these leds like these these ones here these are i think these ones were 40 watts but they run so hot like they're not going to last very long i don't reckon and um yeah for like an extra 30 bucks you get a 90 water that's really bright so what I'm thinking, we'll pull it apart and we'll measure the current across one of the LEDs and see how hard they're driving them. Because there's a lot of LEDs in there. This maybe, I don't know, 100 LEDs, something like that. Yeah, I know. Have a look at that dodgy wire. It's not, well, it's just wiring, it's not dodgy wiring. It's just bird's nesty, isn't it? I'm just going to, um, it's just like that until I get all the roof lined and then I get the sparkies in and they'll, they can wire them all in once I've got them all where I want them and everything. All right, let's pull this thing apart and have a squiz at it. All right, the construction of these things is pretty chintzy. That's why they're so cheap. Definitely no, um, <laughs> no expense spared in the production of these things and definitely not for outside in the weather, no way. Alright, that just drops off there like that. Just comes out of there like that. There's all LEDs. There is a lot of them, eh? How many is there? Do we have to count them all? Let's just do a quick count, eh? Let's go about halfway. Let's call it 40. So maybe 40 to halfway. So let's go 80 per strip times 5, 6. So what, 6, 8, 480 LEDs? Is that right? 5, 8 would be 4, yeah. 
So around 400 AD litres, that's way more than I thought there was going to be there. Let's have a quick look at one of the power supplies without ripping the wires off. Can you see that guys? I'm just kind of mussing around at the edges here, aren't I? Hang on. Radio. 480 LEDs approximately. I didn't count them exactly. I just kind of went halfway. There's around about 80 LEDs per line times six. 480 LEDs. That's a lot of LEDs. Now there's a driver on each end of the board. There's another one hiding in there. It's a come. No, it's not going to come out. We'll pull this one out. Yeah, I've had these apart because um, these are, are um, what would you call it? Non, non, do-it-yourself lights. So you, these are not. You're not supposed to install these yourself. These just come with a cable that's cut off here, with just a couple of leads hanging out of it, and a spark. He's got to install it. But I just open them up, get a bit of extension cord. So just put a normal extension cord on it and just wire it back into the circuit board how the other one was. Now, the, the only problem with this is, of course, it doesn't really have the strain relief designed for an extension cord. And that's why I say they're all going to be wired in properly at some stage. So, yeah, that's the power supply. It looks like... I'm not going to go into extreme detail, but it looks like it's got some... Um, noise suppression on the inlet side so inlet chokes hasn't got a looks like all the power switching's done through the transistor there there's probably a couple of i reckon there are probably a couple of chokes so it's probably a buck converter and there's some output smoothing on there so it's, it's a pretty good circuit actually looks reasonably well made all the solder joints look pretty good looks like reasonably like apart from all the chintzy, like this really chintzy plastic, the actual aluminium body is quite sturdy. The power supplies look pretty good. So let's see if we can measure the voltage across one of these LEDs. That'll be interesting. Oh yeah, let's power this thing up and see what sort of um, current drop we got across each LED. 20 milliamps means you're driving the LED kind of at its maximum. Less, say 15 milliamps, 12 milliamps, would mean that these LEDs are going to last for a long time. Bitch, that's swamping the camera out. It's swamping my eyeballs out. Now remember, even though each LED only runs at 3 volts, the combined voltage drop across this panel is probably still going to be 100 and something volts. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Why is that? Blacking out that whole line of LEDs when I go to test that out. All right, this is gonna need some more investigation. Well, we've resorted to the phone camera. So it looks like what we've got is the positive line comes out there's a track that runs right along the top of the whole circuit board down to the middle here that runs the bar down there and that's driving this first set of six LEDs and each one of these lines is kind of a bus bar that joins the whole lot up so we'll have to measure across hmm, somewhere so the whole, the whole, all of these LEDs are all being powered sequentially along this way, six at a time. So the voltage drop across there, if that was 20 milliamps, if it was 20 milliamps per LED, maximum, that'd be um, times six, that'd be 120 milliamps. If I shorted across there, but I reckon I was seeing 300. That was interesting.
This is insanely bright. I just want to see what the voltage drop across each LED is. Oh, it's three volts. Okay. Alrighty, yeah, so three volts. So, um, so three volts, but I measured the current draw across there was 330 milliamps. Which is obviously way too much. So it must there must be at least two 330 halved. Yeah. So 160. That would make it 30 milliamps per LED. That's still too high, I reckon. Because they're not running hot. So maybe there are three LED package. I wish there was some way to test that. Wait, I've got an idea. Right, I've got the little um, eyeglass here. So I'm gonna power these up with a very low voltage. And then I'm going to see if I can see the, how many LEDs are inside these things. Let's just hold that on there, like that. Like that. Drop the voltage. Down, down, down. Oh yeah. Let's go deep down and see what we can see. Hmm. Looks like there's only one LED. One LED per package. Interesting. The current drop across each section doesn't make sense then. Hmm. 336 milliamps across each line of LEDs. Alright, I just want to lengthen, uh, I'm just going to drop one of these wires off. That wasn't the solder. My heavy head in the way there. There we go. Right. Oh God, I'm glad I know how to drive it. Oh, maybe that was it. All right, let's turn it on. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Uh, 260, 280 milliamps, 290. If we hook up the other amp meter here. Oh, it's kind of swamping out again, isn't it? Oops, oops, careful, careful, careful. 335. Oh, it does jump up a bit when you short one. Yeah, okay. So about 10 milliamps difference between the two meters, so. Hmm. Interesting. 300 milliamps. Okay. Don't know what that told us. It's about the same. Still 300 milliamps drop. Still 300 milliamps drop across each line of LEDs. So yeah, must be they must be multi-package LEDs. They couldn't be. What's that work out to be again? Just say it was 300. We'll go in between. Oh, that, well, we know that's 50. We don't need to do it on the calculator. Crying out loud. Yeah. So 50 milliamp drop per LED. It's got to be at least two packages in each one of those, surely. But um, yeah, it's not doesn't run hot at all. Let's um, let's run the whole thing for a few minutes, and then we'll just see how hot it gets. Now 
Now this panel has been running for about 20 minutes. Power supplies are cool. Both ends. Let's shut it down. Now remember what I said, even though it's shut down, there's still 400 volts across these caps. Um, where am I? It's 400 volts across these caps here. So don't touch them. And the panel. Oh, look, that might be 30 degrees, maybe. It's, it's barely, it's not warm at all. And a little chipsy in here. Transformers are cool. Caps are cool. Everything's cool. Let's just short one of these caps out down here. I don't want to get zapped down there. No. So the chip, that chip's completely cool. So yeah, there you go. So I think in conclusion, although um, the plastic side of these things is pretty chintzy, oh, that's pretty crappy. Definitely not designed for outside use. Um, you got to wire in your own cable if you want to plug it into a power socket. So really you should be an electrician to muss around with any of this stuff. Um, but yeah, the fact dual power supplies, it all runs cool. I reckon for 70 bucks, and 90 watt output that's not a bad lead panel at all but the problem is they don't if you see them on the shelves in Bunnings they don't last long you've got to grab them <laughs> well you can huh, interesting oh what was what we gonna say about the LEDs yeah so I reckon um, they're multi package that they'd be running hot if they were if they were pumping too much current per LED through there they'd be getting hot and the whole thing stays cool so the longevity of these panels I reckon is going to be really good really good Well, there you go. That's a review of the Lagos Slimline Baton from Bunnings. Manufactured by Brilliant. Where that's made, I don't know. I could not find a country of origin on the box anywhere. Not even in the fine print down here, nothing. Presume China, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, there it is. There's all the specs there. If you want to have a look at that. Oh, that's going to be fuzzy. Yeah. Oh well, I don't know if they're, if they're around anywhere else or not, but yeah, they seem to be alright for inside use. Catches! And don't forget to don your helmet. <laughs>